Storage problems can result in costly repairs and production downtime for the organization. Therefore, it's important to have the right skills and tools to start the troubleshooting process. In this video, I'll explain how to troubleshoot some common storage problems. Regardless of how robust your storage solution is, you're likely to encounter problems at some point in time. So we're going to take a look here at some of the common problems and whether you're using a single internal hard drive or the most robust SAN configuration, uh, the same problems can arise. So among those common ones, slow file access is definitely one of the things that uh, tends to draw attention to itself because your performance obviously suffers. Now, what is causing slow file access can be a bit of a challenge to run down, but there are a number of diagnostic tools available to try to determine the cause. And you can purchase or download uh, a number of third-party applications. Your operating system itself uh, will also include a number of diagnostic tools. And if you have purchased hardware such as a RAID controller card, or if you do have SAN storage, then uh, most likely that came with diagnostic software as well. So hopefully you can pinpoint uh, what the problem is with one of those applications. Now, backup software or antivirus software running, this is another common cause of slow file access because uh, backups have to read every file that is included in the backup. Uh, and similarly, antivirus scans have to scan every file uh, that's included in the scan as well. So they are pretty demanding on the storage and they can certainly slow things down. Insufficient disk space is uh, is very common because of the amount that we're simply storing these days. And when you start to run out of space, files aren't able to find enough contiguous space to store the whole file, uh, which ends up writing a little bit of the file here, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. And then when you have to retrieve that file, it's all over the place. And that, of course, is known as fragmentation. And uh, that certainly can slow down your access. And if you do actually contract a virus, then that can certainly cause problems, as well as uh, any other kind of application that simply isn't accessing the disk in the most efficient manner. So there could certainly be, uh, you know, a number of things that are causing slow file access, and it can be a challenge sometimes. If the operating system is not found, typically the bootloader files may have been deleted or simply may have come become corrupt or unreadable. Uh, you know, hard drives do experience just flat out hardware failures from time to time, and sections of the disk simply become corrupted or unreadable. And if that includes the boot files, then obviously the operating system is not going to be able to read those files and, and it's not going to be able to load. Uh, sudden loss of power, pending hard drive failures, viruses, these are common causes of these types of issues. Now, you can replace boot files or even repair the boot sector with various recovery tools. Um, that certainly can work if it's more of a software issue or if it's just located bad sectors of the drive. They can just be rewritten on other sectors and hopefully your disk will, uh, well, your operating system will be found at that point. But if you discover that this has started to happen a little too frequently, it usually is indicative of a hardware level failure. And it's a good chance that, that drive is going to need to be replaced anyway. So it's usually a good idea to replace the drive as soon as you start encountering these issues. Uh, if data is not available, you know, it's the same kind of issue as the boot files. They simply cannot be read. So there's these bad sectors on the disk wherein part of the file that it's trying to retrieve resides in a bad sector. So it's able to read some of the file, but some of it it can't and you simply cannot retrieve the file un unless you can get all of it. Uh, you might start to see that there's unsuccessful backups because of this, uh, because again, a backup needs to read and make a copy of every file included in the backup. So if a bad sector is encountered, you're going to end up with an unsuccessful backup. Uh, usually, if you just look at the uh, device itself, storage devices typically have LED or error lights on them. Uh, and if it's lit, then it may indicate a drive error or failure. Uh, so you definitely might want to keep an eye on that. 
If you cannot mount the device, uh, either a mount point or a drive letter is not working, then any kind of a disk associated with the volume may have failed. And again, recall that we can have multiple disks configured into a single volume or uh, mapped to a single drive letter. So if any one of them fails, uh, usually the entire uh, mount point or drive letter or array or whatever it is uh, will become inaccessible. If the entire drive is not available, then certainly check to make sure that it has power. And uh, it's not uncommon for a power cable to get dislodged if somebody was just working on the system in particular. They usually don't just fall out, but if somebody was doing maintenance, they certainly might have jarred something loose. Uh, and again, if you can, of course, run some kind of diagnostic utility to try to isolate the problem. But uh, when they are simply not being reported at any level, uh, certainly the power is one of the first things to check. So a lot of things that can go wrong with devices. They're usually fairly reliable, but you always have to keep on top of it because, of course, nothing is 100%.